this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is Razer's Stream Controller. This is an alternative to Elgato's Stream Deck, and it was crafted in partnership with Loop Deck, so you can see that it has a number of interesting highlights to it that include multiple different dials and buttons, as well as profile switching and more. In this video, I'm going to show you how it's really interesting and potentially really useful because you can use it, for example, as I'm showing here, with DaVinci Resolve to improve your editing capabilities and make life a little bit easier. So in place of keyboard shortcuts and other things, you can use it to switch between the various different edit, cut, fusion and more pages, and then also to use various different custom buttons to streamline your editing. But this device is intended for streaming purposes. So uh, for streamers, obviously it's a tool that you can use with Twitch, for example, and OBS and other tools to access a variety of shortcuts and things to basically optimize your stream and to make it more interesting and engaging, which is something that Algato has been doing a while with its tools. And now Raze is giving you more capabilities at your fingertips. Now this is an expensive bit of kit coming at around 269 pounds. So it isn't cheap, but what you do get is access to a variety of different things. Stick around with me because I'm gonna show you in the software later on all the different apps and things that you can connect with it. You could see it works with DaVinci Resolve, for example, but obviously it also works with a variety of other things to streamline not only your streaming capabilities, but also editing processes, for example, if you're using it for photo editing, or if you wanna use it with Adobe products, you can do that as well. And it'll optimize all sorts of things with a variety of custom options. And as standard, they're sort of already pre-programmed, and then you can add in your own extra ones. Have a variety of buttons that you can see with the little displays on them that have haptic feedback, so you actually get a bit of buzzy response out of them too. And then obviously you also have the dials, which give you a, a nice control over granular controls, not just volumes, but other things that you can program in there. For example, you can spin through the timeline if you're editing video, which is really handy. Now in the box, as you can see, you get the controller itself, a little stand to put it on that puts it at an angle, a USB-C cable, and not much else. But once you plug it in and download the software, via Synapse and also Loop Deck software, you can then access a variety of other things. And one of the things that I found interesting about this is the sort of flexibility of it, but also the intelligence. So if you're switching between programs, as you'll see me doing in a second, it automatically changes what's set up on the screen and what's at your fingertips to make life a lot easier. Some of the initial setup process here, you'll see that sort of main screen gives you access to standard things, Twitch, Facebook, Spotify, Instagram, Chrome, Steam, and other things like that. So it's obviously aimed at streamers to start with, and you have really quick access to be able to press those buttons and it will load things up. You can then access a variety of basic controls and you can see some of the buttons are blank and that's because it gives you that programmability to be able to just put in what other custom controls you want. But at a basic level you can see that you can turn on sub only chat for example or you can adjust volumes and do other things with it. But then I started playing around with the granular controls to use it for video editing because having a tool that makes me more efficient at video editing is obviously pretty appealing. And with a video editing software, you often find that you have to have a lot of keyboard shortcuts or learn a lot of things in order to streamline that process. But with this, it gives you quick access to a variety of controls. You can see that you've got the Razer tool, Ripple to Playhead, for example. You can scrub through the timeline with the dials, zoom in and out with one dial, move the markers around with another, jump to various places, adjust volume levels, select clips, all from these numerous different dials on there, which would usually require various different controls via your keyboard and mouse in order to do it. You can also jump through a variety of pages with custom controls on each of them and that will give you access to all sorts of things and you can see some of them when you press that button down the bottom switches to the relevant page within the software as well you'll notice that only one two three and four are lit up at the moment on those buttons on the bottom but you can add extra pages into it so you can have add extra profiles essentially for those and then you can put extra controls in there as well you'll see there's blank spaces on some of the buttons you can add in your own i for example added in a button that, that allows me to quickly save a project so when i've made a cut and i've deleted some tracks moved things around made some changes in the timeline i want to save 
I don't have to use my keyboard or click save with a mouse. You can just press a button. So you're basically optimizing the way you work. Now, this is obviously one demonstration of various uses of it. But the fact that it will switch to this and then when you click to Windows, it will switch back to other uses makes it really appealing. Also optimize what you're doing in terms of if you're doing different things. So one minute you might be editing video, the next minute you might be streaming. If you're doing that, you can then easily change what you're doing via the stream controller, but it will also let you customize that. And it's nice because you don't have to go into the software to switch to it. So it automatically recognizes when you're changing into different settings and then switches between them. So I'm gonna demonstrate some of that and what you can do and the potential for it in the software now. So initially when you download it, you'll see that it does appear in sign apps, but if you go into there, then essentially you need to go into download loop deck. So loop deck has some separate software, which obviously is selected in here. You can see that the Razer stream controller appears via here alongside loop decks, other devices. So that highlights the partnership. Now you'll see once again, that I have the resolve timeline stuff in here but you can see that there are a variety of other profiles. So the main one, the standard one that you'd have when you first plug it in is this one where you see a variety of different buttons for access to different things. And you can also obviously go in here. So we've got streaming center, we have Twitch chat commands. So if you're running on Twitch, obviously you've got follow only chat, sub only chat, and you've got other things for clearing a chat and handling those sorts of controls. And then you can toggle recording and start streaming and other buttons. You'll see again that some of these are blank, but you can easily go in from the side from a variety of different controls and throw them in. So you see you've got Streamlabs and once that's running, you can access controls in there. You also have Twitch. You have to sign in and connect your Twitch account there. But then once you've done that, you can then use it to create markers. So we could have, for example, you could drop a marker on there. So if we go back to the Twitch one, you could put it here. So you just drag and drop what you want into it. So now if I press this button, that will obviously leave a marker on the stream when you're running it. And you can also get a view account so you can see how many people are watching you from just at a glance. And it's really simple drag and drop and it automatically immediately puts this stuff on the screen itself. So once I've put it in here in the software, it's automatically instantly added in to the stream controller. There are other simple controls too. So we can have some Spotify controls in here, for example, and you can search through a variety of different ones. You also have the ability, you'll see that there are a number of different options in here. So we've got Premiere Pro, Photoshop, Illustrator, Audition, Audacity, and you can also access a number of other ones from the marketplace. So you click on the marketplace and you'll see we then have access to a variety of extra things. There are plugins for a lot of different apps that you can use. I installed the DaVinci Resolve ones because it wasn't there as standard. And that then gave me access to all those sorts of controls. But you can see if you use other things. So, for example, GIMP's there. Photoshop is here as well. Premiere Pro is here. You can even use it with Slack. Vegas Pro is another video editing software you can use it with. So you have all sorts of actions and access to a variety of things in there. It also has plugins for various different things, including Lightrooms, even Microsoft Flight Simulator, Photoshop, OBS Studio. So that's already installed to give you controls over, over OBS, but also Streamlabs is also installed too. So whichever one of those you use. And if you use Twitch Studio, you can download and install that. It also has voice mod and v voice meter controls. So if you want to add in some funky audio effects to your stream, you can do that too. There are various different icon packs. So you can download and install different icons for the display buttons on the screen. One of the things that I like about it is it also has this haptic feedback on those buttons, which I have noted already, but essentially when you press a button, you get a feedback from it as standard so that you then can sort of know when you've pressed that button and the action has happened. You'll also find a variety of other things in here where it's pretty neat, but it just shows you a sort of flexibility. Now you can, as I said, obviously switch between these in here so you can choose the profile that you want to be on and you can customize that 
uh, in here and change the settings that you want. But what I like is that when you do switch apps, it automatically changes this anyway. So what's here is dynamic and it will switch to the profile you need. So you don't have to launch the software, change to the different profile in order to use it. And that makes it a lot more appealing. You also have a lot more programmability because obviously some of these pages don't have anything on them. Or if they do, you can add in extra actions for them. So you can see we can we've got plenty of buttons here that don't have anything on. And then you can go in, you can create macros, multi-toggles, keyboard shortcuts, and other things. Or you can find whatever you want from the list in here as well. So if you know, for example, what your keyboard shortcut is that you want to add in. If you want to do a keyboard shortcut, you can just drag that in and then you can record your shortcut in here. And we can then put whatever we want in. So I've put shift control R for example as one. You can save that. You can add an image in for it. You can do all sorts of things. So there's a lot of programmability and customization that you can do in there. But even at a default level, and I think that's one of the nicest things is that you don't have to play around with it loads in order to get it working well. So there you have it. This has been a look at the Razer Stream Controller and the way I've been using it. And it's really powerful and interesting in a number of different ways. Hopefully you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Check out the description for more information and links to find out more about the product. Thanks very much for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.